The average American eats more than 75 pounds of chicken meat every year. Our appetite for chicken has come at a high cost, often hidden from consumers. When we get chicken at a grocery store or in a restaurant, it's hard to remember that the meat we're buying comes from an animal. We don't know how this meat was produced. We see the end product cut and shrink-wrapped or battered and deep-fried. We may have a picture, left over from elementary school, of chickens clucking in a barnyard, scratching and pecking at the earth. But for the vast majority of the eight billion chickens raised and killed in the United States each year, little could be further from the truth. This Compassion Over Killing investigation was produced with undercover footage from chicken farms and slaughter plants in the United States, including two of the country's largest poultry producers, Tyson and Purdue. The conditions our investigators documented are not uncommon. They are the industry standard. The life of a broiler chicken, a chicken raised and killed for meat, begins in a commercial hatchery. In large walk-in incubators, chicks hatch by the thousands. They never meet their mothers. The chicks are boxed in crates and then dumped in long warehouses with tens of thousands of other chicks. In the 1950s, it took 84 days to raise a five-pound chicken. Because of genetic selection and growth-promoting drugs, it now takes an average of only 45 days. University of Arkansas researchers say if we grew as fast as a chicken, we'd weigh 349 pounds by age two. On the factory farm, the chickens will never once step foot outdoors or breathe fresh air. Instead, they will become increasingly overcrowded as they grow at severely accelerated rates on an unnatural diet, including manure and the rendered remains of other chickens. A leading welfare problem caused by intensive genetic selection for fast growth is the high rate of leg disorders. According to research published in the veterinary record, more than 20% of broiler chickens suffer chronic pain as a result of bone disease. Some crippled chicks are unable to reach the water dispensers. Other chicks become trapped in the feeders where they die of thirst. Compassion over killing investigators delivered aid to many animals in need. We found a bird caught in her feeder. She's immobilized and she has no access to water, so we're gonna offer her some now. As the weeks pass and the chicks grow, open space in the shed decreases. A heavy blanket of dust from feathers, feed, and litter covers the equipment and hangs in the air. The pollution, feces, and filth inside the shed mix with the stench of ammonia, making the air unhealthy to breathe. We're in the middle of the shed, and we're going to test the level of ammonia in the air at the bird's level. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control recommends that workers not be exposed to ammonia levels more than 35 parts per million for more than 15 minutes. But actual ammonia levels are often twice this amount, and chickens are exposed to these elevated levels for weeks, not minutes. The ammonia level is 72 parts per million. In such conditions, factory farmers accept that many chickens will die from disease and stress. As two industry researchers write, is it more profitable to grow the biggest bird and have increased mortality? Simple calculations suggest that it is better to get the weight and ignore the mortality. 
It's not profitable to give chickens individualized veterinary care. Instead, they are left to die. After only four weeks, hundreds of birds are dead and their rotting bodies lie throughout the shed. Forced to have lived in their own waste, many of the corpses show signs of feather loss and burns on their stomachs from noxious ammonia. As the birds reach their last two weeks of life on the factory farm, welfare problems grow even more serious. Mentally, these chickens are still babies, but they're trapped in bodies too heavy for their legs to hold or their organs to support. Industry journal Feedstuffs reports, broilers now grow so rapidly that the heart and lungs are not developed well enough to support the remainder of the body, resulting in congestive heart failure and tremendous death losses. As early as six weeks of age, the chickens have reached market weight and are ready to be taken to slaughter. They are typically rounded up in near total darkness when they are calmer and less resistant. The birds are caught by the legs and thrown into crates, which are stacked onto trucks. Many chickens are injured in this process, suffering dislocated hips, broken legs, and wings. Once packed onto trucks, the chickens are transported to the slaughter plant. They are denied food, water, and shelter from extreme temperatures. Some chickens don't survive the trip. Industry researchers report, chickens find transport a fearful, stressful, injurious, and even fatal procedure. At the slaughter plant, the chickens are moved out of the trucks, dumped onto conveyors, and hung upside down in shackles. A machine cuts their throats, but some chickens miss the blades, and there are no laws regulating their welfare during slaughter. Those whose throats aren't slit drown in scalding tanks. Once dead, the chicken carcasses are defeathered, dismembered, and disemboweled. Each step in the process makes the chicken's bodies less recognizable until it's hard for us to remember that the chicken wings, nuggets, drumsticks, and breasts we buy came from living, breathing animals. Nearly all of the chicken meat sold in American grocery stores and restaurants comes from chickens raised in the conditions we just witnessed. We have no nutritional need for chicken meat or any other animal product. In fact, there are substantial health risks associated with eating chickens. A 2003 Consumer Reports investigation found that almost half of the chickens sold in grocery stores carried the foodborne pathogens Salmonella or Campylobacter, and most of these bacteria were resistant to antibiotics. In the United States, 8 billion broiler chickens are killed each year, 1 million every hour. The abuses endured by these birds are immense, but animal cruelty is not unique to the broiler chicken industry. Animals raised for food, unlike dogs and cats, have virtually no legal protection from abuse while on the farm. To satisfy our taste for their meat, their eggs, and their milk, more than one billion other animals are killed each year in the United States. Compassion over killing investigators have documented the conditions of many farmed animals.
Unfortunately, each one of us has the ability to say no to animal cruelty every time we eat. We can protect our health and reduce animal suffering by not eating chicken or other animal products, and instead, choosing any of the varieties of meatless foods available at grocery stores and restaurants. Each time we sit down to a meal, we can choose compassion over killing. We can choose the vegetarian option. For Compassion Over Killing's free vegetarian starter guide, visit tryveg.com or call 1-866-MEAT-FREE. And for more information about broiler chickens, please visit chickenindustry.com.